the NEMA should work through the local governments. Just tell the, the, the Muruka chief, if you find anybody in the swamp, we shall go for you. For the Muruka chief and the Gomborra chief. Because they are the ones who live there. Why, why don't they stop these people? All the people I had offered to, to help were some few people in uh, Busoga, a few also in, in Ukedi and in, Chige, in Chigezi, because those ones, but few, not many, because those ones had been misled by the colonial government to go in the swamps. And even the independence government of, 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 of independence misled our people to go into the Chibimba swamp. Lack of awareness about environmental laws seem to be the root cause of the increasing encroachment and destruction of protected natural resources. Currently, there is an ongoing eviction of residents who have been staying in Lubeji wetland. Some residents claim land ownership and others have been paying nominal rent fee with soul. But what does the law say? At least they would have compensated us and we usually know, okay, they have compensated me some money. I'm going to go and buy maybe a plot of land, then maybe I'll look for some other money to build another house. But they have not compensated us. They have not given us any clear information of why they're literally breaking us. Because if I told they are saying, yes, we built in swamps, where were they when we were building? Where were they? It's literally, I've literally spent here all my childhood. I'm literally 25 years right now. From birth, I was born here. It's now 25 years. They have, they, I, they have said, they literally said on television some time back that they gave us three years. Where are the three years they literally gave us? They came in, passed by, they literally said they have added in us like some 21 more days. Within two days, they came and destroyed people's houses. Busuru, Tumaze Mwaka Gumu. Nga tetu, tetubu wanga ku. Na inge mabiga yona, tuwari tubu waburu unji. Nema, ya gala tugamba, Buganda, e inobu zivu. Olavo mtu watu mtu ni mamu sanga nga so mtu. Ni mamu tu wala mkomera. E komera liyo, nga tanda mana kuwoza ni wagamba chite elebeze buo kuwa. Nena fo batu watebeleza, batu tebeleza, batu tebeleza, nanti tulimu nema. Tetu inabu kakafu. Kubanga abantu fetu wagula kobe ya bantu wabakade. For example, fetu wagula wano kumuntu wa mukada kota kota. Ere ya, tu, ya tusaini ngele. Abamu kubali wonga wa imidirano. Ye muami olio woku mudirano wali. Bamu zaali dawa kadi dawa. Walu wano mchala abadde saidi walinga kota kota. Batu kute anawea. You can have a title on a wetland which existed before wetlands were protected by law. For the case of Buganda, in Buganda, you know, the land tenure system in Buganda is Mairo. Mairo is not due ownership. Mairo can be public Mairo for, for government or private. or private Mairo for an individual. And uh, the other tenure in, is freehold, of course mainly crown land, uh, government land. And of course, leasehold, which is uh, either on, on freehold or on Milo. So the ecosystem we are talking about Rubiji, for example, uh, most of it is land owned by uh, the Kabaka. Uh, so it had the titles uh, before 1995. So the, the titles legally exist on that land. But when we are conserving wetlands, it doesn't matter whether you have a title to the wetland or not. A title is means of ownership. Now, when you own land, usage of it is subject to land use planning. The law does not preclude us per se, but it's stop, it stops us from, using, uh, from utilizing those areas if we own them in a certain way. So, the way you utilize public, any open space is not the way you utilize the wetland. Let me give you an example. You may be able to undertake agricultural activities uh, in some areas that you own, and then in those areas, you could be able to probably uh, uh, set up a farm or something, or fish farming, 
but you may not be able to set up a factory. But it's still your land. But the how you use it, uh, how you use it may differ depending on how ne uh, how NEMA uh, classifies that area. So and then for those that are, let's say these are protected areas, they are government properties. You're not even allowed to set foot onto it. You're supposed to let nature take its course, and NEMA has to protect that. So where government owns and everything, you're not even supposed to set foot on that piece of land. Just let it be. Let, them, let nature take its course. But where you own, but probably it's in the swampy area or the wetland, you have to use it in line with what is acceptable in that space. You can easily tear a wetland by looking at its conditions. But you can also tear a wetland by looking at its... Uh, elevation profile, another height. So a wetland will not be in a mountain. It will always be on a lowland. So the first sign is, is this a lowland? Yes. If it is a lowland, do we get seasonal or permanent flooding there? If the answer is yes, you, you have the answer already. Very simple. But let me tell you, the problem is actually not that people do not know. The reason I say so is that people actually come to backfill wetlands at night in hiding. They build at night in hiding. And that tells you that they already know what they are doing is bad. To conserve the environment and its ecosystem, Uganda established the National Environment Management Act, which led to the creation of the National Environment Management Authority in NEMA. Despite the act, issues of wetland encroachment and eviction persist. These laws, uh, as in the constitution, are made uh, when they are put by public private members, but often they are made by a minister of government. That means that there is a ministry, a lying ministry, and there is an authority, let's say a ministry of environment, and then there is authority which is NEMA. And it's on them, and actually even uh, when you read the NEMA Act, the authority has the duty to disseminate all the information about whatever its activities are. We've had probably about two, three years back when there was an amendment in the, S in the NSSF Act, and the minister allocated, within herself, allocated for herself six billion to sensitize the people on the, on the amendments and developments in the law. So it's the duty is on these persons, the ministry that, that is uh, under, the, under, the, under which uh, that exact um, item falls, and the responsible authorities. They have to be sensitizing people, um, uh, disseminating information about this. And when I say that, uh, what is a swamp, what is a fully protected swamp, what is partially protected, what is protected by the community, all this is supposed to be done by NEMA and the authority, with the assistance of uh, the lying uh, yes. ministry. So it's their duty to budget for this and not only budget for it but also undertake uh, activities and be able to report back or to account the population through parliament. We don't need NEMA. Who doesn't know what a swamp is? Ekshara, if you don't know it, I can tell you in Yankori. To worry a maso, what do you know? How did you come in the wetland? And yet you knew it was, a, it, you, because there are signs everywhere of what a wetland is. So I think my appeal to the people in the wetlands, please, I don't want the Basarikere to be Bakambwe. The, they should give time, say, please go, and the people go by themselves. And I've seen that some people are beginning to go from Nabueru. I saw it on the TV that some of the people on their own. Because this is a matter of life and death for this part of the world. Rain, water for irrigation. Under Section 5 of the National Environment Management Act, NEMA is mandated to manage the environment, coordinate, and supervise all environmental activities. I think it's, it's partly to do with the political will. We've had the president, I think, should have been in Kenya when he said that he knows the problem is there, but he doesn't want to go there because of the votes. So it has a, a, something to do with the political will to do what he's supposed to do. So because if, the, if that's the president's turn, then it's hard that probably you will be seen, if you probably, let's say, you put on the shoes of someone in Neymar and you come and enforce 
though they are saying of the president, you will be seen to going against the people, and you may be seen as derailing away the votes that would keep the government in power. So political will has a lot to do with it. But you also know that there's something probably uh, those who do importation that they will, they we call environmental levy. These are taxes charged when you're importing something that has an impact, often negative, on the environment. Now, this money is supposed to be directed to empowering these activities in safeguarding the environment. Now, the, the problem probably, that is how the uh, economic structure is, uh, is set up, that if or even if this money is, created, is collected by URA, it doesn't go to these efforts. It first goes to the consolidated fund. And whatever happens there, only God knows. So it's now here, it's where the parliamentarians who do this budget allocation should be also be liable. In that, why would you leave if you levy a tax to do a, 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 a role X? Then why are we not, why are we hearing Nema saying it doesn't have the capacity to do certain roles at certain times? So there, there are of course budget questions if you look at the allocations over probably the first three four years. There have been shortfalls on what has been. Um, allocated to them and probably even if it had the will, it uh, may not have the capacity to do the enforcement. But why? The money that should be allocated or that is taxed uh, on the Uganda, that people doing business in Uganda, to do what NEMA ought to do in real time is allocated to different priorities. When the Section 37, subsection 3 of the Act states that the authority, in consultation with the lead agents and the District Environment Committee, shall declare any wetland to be a protected wetland, thereby excluding or limiting human activities. But NEMA also works with a different set of organs internally. They have the, the, their enforcement team, they have agents. But what is critical is also that NEMA uh, in relation to NEMA, at district level, we have committees on environmental and natural resources. Now, when you look at this committee's composition, it has people from uh, the mayor, it has people from the planning authority, it has the cows, it has all these people that form the base of our local communities or our local governments. And these people, just also to bring it in quotation, we should not be alive that. We have what they call the Fiscal Planning Act. It's a national act and it declares the entire Uganda and a planning zone. That means there's no in this country where you should set up any infrastructure without the approval of those local authorities. So that's where the problem begins, uh, um, um, begins from. There's this National Planning Act tells us uh, approval, get the approvals. Then we also have these district committees that have all these people, including people from the planning authorities, that have to authorize people to construct in their local communities. Now, then there's also the bit, now that's a bit of the, the, the legal framework and people that we have, but now there's also the bit of the Wanaiji. And now the Wanaiji, I spoke about the, the few generations of rights. Now, part of those rights is their right to own property, which is their right to own land. And land uh, includes everything that is on that land, permanent structure, so a house is part of your land. So have a right on that property. Now these people come in also, they own these, uh, these properties and they begin uh, probably setting up constructions. I presume, before you set up these major constructions that, that we are seeing, then you should have um, gotten approval from at least minimally the local planning authority. So by the time they, you own a piece of land, you put up a structure, that means that <clears throat> you've gotten approvals from uh, Minister of Lands, whether Buganda is your landlord, from Buganda Land Board, then you go ahead and go to these uh, uh, fiscal authorities, then they approve you to put up a structure. Then you own the land, not only that the land is in the forest, uh, is, in, is in the swamp, sorry, or whatever natural resources, but it's also having your um, settlement activities which have been approved by the responsible authorities. By the time the authority approves you to put up a structure in that area, and yet the same authority has a parallel duty to, to uh, protect those areas, that's where the problem comes from. And just to make it even more technical, Nema always tells us it's a swamp. You ever even the president says you see this is a swamp. Why do you go there? But not every swamp is protected 
in this country, and not all swamps are protected at the same level. So we have the protected uh, swamps that are fully protected, and those are under NEMA. We have those that are partially protected, and then we have a category of those that are protected by the community. So how does someone know that one, I'm in a protected space, second, is it fully protected or partially protected? Or is it protected by the community? So that's where NEMA has to align. And these, even NEMA declares that this public is fully or partially, they have to gazette and report that this area is fully protected, partially operated by the community. And these NEMA people have to be there and have to be involved in the approval. The moment they are up, uh, they, someone owns the land, they uh, apply for approval and they are approved by a planning authority that has someone who sits from NEMA. And that person is also mandated to sit on the NEMA District Natural Resources and Environmental Committee. Then there is a question of estoppel because you cannot look at someone on their land, utilize their land, erect structures, start living there, and then out of the blue, you, you pretend to have a member that have a duty to protect this uh, protected space, and then um, that's uh, how it all gets there. And then you begin uh, er erasing buildings and distorting life. Following evictions in the Lubiji wetland, men have lost property, raising a question about compensation. Ideally, under Article 26, before your property is taken away, you're supposed to be compensated prior. But the presumption that that is the property. Now there are questions as to ownership, and then there, there are also uh, legal questions as to whether NEMA could be stopped from saying that it's not yours. But what makes these protected environments different from the rest is that instead of prior compensation, you might be instead of compensation, you may be prosecuted. So instead of waiting of who will compensate, you might be again dragged to court. Because what you're doing might be again an offense punishable under law if you do an unauthorized activity in those swamps. So, here the question of compensation may not be as straightforward as it is for other, uh, other property rights because that may be protected and then the may, may question of whether it's yours. But where we have clear ownership uh, documentation and can either have plot number this in place this is for this. The, although NEMA could have erased your structures from uh, the swamp, it does not mean that NEMA owns. So you may retain your ownership rights of that plot, but you have to utilize it in a way that is in consonance with the nature of the space that you own. Existence of wetlands for all of us. Everyone who has unlawfully settled or established an industry or established a structure in a wetland illegally is an encroacher. So the, the activities that the law allows uh, have, uh, sustainable harvesting of papyrus, tourism and recreation activities like budding, uh, uh, usage of wetland to supply water for irrigation. So they are compatible activities. Sport hunting, for example, of, 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 of statungas and other antelopes. So the, uh, fish uh, farming, like I've said. As the evictions in Lubiji wetland continue, encroachment on wetlands across the country persists. The public, admit, the public, even as the population, this is when we go wrong, especially if you blatantly walk into a protected area and probably opt utilize it in a way without anyone's uh, knowledge because NEMA may want today but it may come in tomorrow mm -hmm. so they you could say we have obligations on either end but you see an individual is hard to, to earmark but for NEMA we allocate taxes for you taxpayers money goes into having that institution running so it, we cannot say that the the obligations are mutual NEMA has an active role. It has an active role to go out constantly remind others. If even possible, those that probably are fully, uh, uh, fully protected, fence it off. Mm -hmm. Do more than just leaving it blank. Have these warnings on. Let them be continuous. Like I said, 
for someone to undertake activities in the swamp, it's not that they are hiding some money under uh, under 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 a shoe or under the under the rocks. You see them from the get go. Who is monitoring these activities? By the time you see a vice cropping up slowly by slowly, you must uh, you must undertake a remedial action or uh, action to advise the activities at the earliest. Because if you don't do that, someone sets up a kiosk, you wait. The, the, the person who has come and put us on a simple kiosk, then it become a structure, then become a school, become a factory. But what have you been doing all, all, all of this time? When we all drive uh, to Masaka, back and forth, what have you been doing? Why wait all that long? So NEMA, we all have the duty, of course, not to employ the plan, but NEMA has a more positive role. And that's why it's paid to do. Don't wait when things are going to to this level because even we doubt because in some areas the people have dumped tons and tons of soil i doubt i'm not a, 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 a best aside that even the swamp can be able to reclaim that i know nature is strong but why wait to give nature such a big task to reclaim somewhere that um, has already been degraded so don't wait for it to be degraded don't wait for one person to become 10 don't wait for 10 to become 100 then you have thousands and tens of thousands that that's why even now even the humane face of it uh, comes to a stop never. That you've seen these people who have seen that who have been there for ages. What has them been doing over time? So NEMA has a heavier role and it's on them and that's why we pay them. So they should be doing this more actively than the individuals who are employed in those wetlands. NEMA has to do its job. Simple as that. NEMA has to be proactive. Gazette what is fully protected, gazette what is partially protected, tell us what is protected by the community, tell us if uh, in Gazette includes that how, can we use this place or not if we are to use it how do we use it who authorizes us so we have to be uh, proactive and then also NEMA has to be proactive in educating us because some people may ask the benefits of this but we can see climate change is real climate change is happening this is what uh, NEMA has to be telling us what are we losing and this is not only in Uganda what we do here affects people uh, miles away and what we do right also puts um, puts um, a posi positive points in livelihoods far beyond this country. So NEMA has to put it, be putting out that message uh, that message of why we need to protect this environment, the benefits that come with, and what we could face if there is a natural disaster, if we have uh, environmental calamities, and then also go ahead and tell us that here you don't come. Here you may come, but if you come, do X and don't do Y. Kande chaka zitaro. Kale.